Welcome back to the channel, fellas. Today, I'm bringing you the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Can PJ Fleck turn around the boat, right the ship, row the boat, and get Minnesota some wins this year? Let's check it out. All right, let's check out this schedule. Pretty easy from what it looks like. A couple FCS teams, Fresno State, Rutgers, Iowa, Northwestern, Maryland, Ohio State, Nebraska, Michigan, Penn State, Wisconsin, and Michigan State. That's a pretty rough second half of the season, but I I'm seeing five, maybe six wins for this team. I think those are very winnable games outside the top 10 teams there so three top 10 teams for minnesota but i do think they have a chance to do well let's check out this recruiting class and how the future for minnesota is gonna boom they hit on joey morgan a 72 overall defensive tackle my man what a quality prospect right there plus they land nigel mccoy 70 overall halfback not bad minnesota looking good actually this is a very big class i want to know how many people they took but we are here to wish david Pittman, 61 overall defensive tackle good luck my man do your weights go to class by your senior year you should be seeing the field my man good luck as always looks like minnesota won six games this year they forced 20 turnovers and they had a nice three win streak there i'm assuming that's at the beginning yeah it is at the beginning of the season so let's see here they beat the fcs team they lost to fresno state and Rutgers in back-to-back -back weeks only scoring 16 points between those two games beat iowa beat northwestern beat maryland and then of course i mean they lose to the number one overall team ohio state not the worst loss in the world beat nebraska pretty handily lose back-to-back -back weeks to michigan and penn state they beat wisconsin and lose to michigan state so they actually did lose to michigan state there and i think they had a winnable games at rutgers and fresno state so this could have been a nine win season for pj fleck but you've got to look at the positives i think most golden golfers would take those kinds of wins and a six and six season is not the worst thing i've ever seen all right Checking out the top 10 here, Ohio State, Georgia, unanimous, well, I guess unanimous in number one and two, 12 and 0 for both teams, Georgia sitting right there behind Ohio State, really not that far behind, Washington, A&M, and Notre Dame in the top five, kind of seeing who's going to be in the national championship this year, I mean, this is just the coaches poll, we'll check out the BCS poll, but you got to think, with some of those big conference championship games going on, maybe there will be some shifting at the top. Again, Ohio State and Georgia, 1-2. and two. Washington sitting there at number 3. Three top 25 matchups in the top 3 there. So, what will happen for conference championship week? I don't know. But I'm expecting one of those teams to lose. This simulation does love when people lose. I don't know why, but they do always let's check out this heisman race deandre swift from georgia 1600 yards on the ground 14 touchdowns 433 yards receiving and four touchdowns takes the ball and runs away from ahmed dobbins haskins and book there for ohio state notre dame and washington deandre swift my man congratulations on your heisman if only this were real life, I'd love to see DeAndre Swift win a Heisman. Georgia running backs have been slaying for a decade. Well, since Herschel Walker, anyways. Baylor, Minnesota in the Meineke Care Bowl, 6-6 six six versus 6-6. Six six. Minnesota has a chance to go 7-6 this year. That's a very winnable game against Baylor. Kirk is rocking with Minnesota. I'm rocking with Minnesota. Look, their offense isn't going to blow you away, but that defense is pretty good. Top 15. You got to love, a, I mean, you just got to love a top 15 defense. You got Baylor over there with a top 30 defense. Pretty, pretty good, but out of the Big 12, right? So you know some of those stats maybe aren't like the most accurate because some of those Big 12 teams will just chew you up. But Baylor is more talented overall. 
offense and defensive ratings. Their offense is better, but it's not like it's a top five offense. So I'm going to rock with Kirk on this one. I think Minnesota is going to knock the socks off this Baylor team. Also, look at that pass defense down there. I mean, number seven in the league. Okay, Georgia is and Washington are going to play for the national championship. Kind of like I predicted, one team lost. Ohio State lost to Iowa 17 to 7. So Georgia, Washington, that's gonna be quite the game there. That's you know, I'm gonna pick Georgia. I think 13 0. They beat Mississippi State. Well, Washington only beat, you know, Colorado. I think George is going to run away with this one. I'd expect George to outrush Washington. We'll see what happens. Minnesota beat Baylor. What's up? 7-6 and six for P.J. Fleck and the Golden Gophers this year. 10-6 to six at halftime. And then it was 17-20. to 20, But they come back and win the fourth quarter. My man, 31-28, to 28, the final score. Minnesota Golden Gophers, congratulations on a winning season. A winning season season for minnesota i'm pumped that is if that happens in real life i would be jumping up and down as a golden gopher because you know pj fleck is turning the boat around he's gonna get it done let's check out the rest of the stats for this game minnesota loses just barely in overall yardage for this game but they outrush baylor 226 to 192 and they throw the ball just good enough almost 200 to 258 Baylor, of course, doing better through the air, but third down conversion, 50% to 38. You got to think that might have been the deciding factor. Both teams had a turnover, so not the game-changing thing you'd think it would be. Both teams punted well, had a similar number of penalties, though Baylor had 100 yards of penalties. Minnesota wins the time of possession. You'd think with the team that outrushes another team, that's going to happen. Washington loses to Georgia 14-3 to at halftime. Both teams come down and score in the third quarter, and Washington actually outscores Georgia in the fourth quarter, but loses 23-28. to Georgia 14-0 this year. Wow, a complete shellacking, a team, a complete team. 28-23 to is pretty close, but Washington outrushes and outthrows Georgia. 198 to 182 on the ground, 174 to 163 through the air. Wow. Washington's offense showed up, but their defense couldn't hold on long enough for Georgia to stay down. Washington and Georgia have 23 combined penalties. What the heck was that game? I'd hate to watch that. Anikstad for almost 2,000 yards. Smith rushes for 1,071 yards. Top 63 in the country. Good job, my man. Always great to have a 1,000-yard rusher. You do see Bradwell up there with almost 2,200 yards for Tulane. What the heck? Green, good for 533 or 35. Not the worst season. Top 184. But when you only throw for 2,000 yards, 535 is pretty freaking good. My man came down with 25% of the reception yards. Martin, 36 solo tackles. Top 67 in the country. You love it when a guy puts his body out there on the line. I can't say this name. D. Latibudre. 5.5 sacks. Good for top 60 in the country. You want to see a few more sacks from your leading uh, defensive lineman. But Williamson, 5 interceptions. Good for top 24. That will get it done. 5 interceptions on a year. You're going 1 for every other game, basically. My man knows what he's doing. Kicking leaders, of course, we got to check it out. We do see... Mac, good from 47, top 65 in the country. You need to kick it better if you want to be an elite team. Mac, good for you, 47, but Minnesota, you got to have a better kicking game to be elite. That's going to do it for me. I appreciate you. Thanks for sticking around. If you like the video, please like it, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll respond. I'm out. Peace.